Today's Nonsense Wars GBC production features my extensible chain lift. I have a lot of the wide, small chain links, and I had wanted to use them in a lift, but I had not found a way to build it. I thought the steps would have to support balls entirely by themselves, but nothing attaches easily to the links. Simply by chance, I stumbled across a clever implementation. You can fit a rotted element into the center hole of a link and then use the structure of the lift as a guide. Unfortunately, with this approach, the teeth run in a channel and can't touch the input area, so the module requires a dedicated agitator. I did not feel like a step would work well here, as I would ideally want to synchronize it with the teeth. Instead, I turn to the very common rotating tooth. I don't think spinners perform as well as steppers, so I tend to avoid this style of agitator. I haven't done something similar since my very first GBC, the fountain. Furthermore, the spinning axle needs to run perpendicular to the slanted input ramp and connecting it with proper geometry requires disproportionately complex gearing with the universal joint and the fork. I did not find the rest of the drivetrain trivial to implement either. I need to drive the chain from the outside while staying within the bounds of a 10-wide module, and this does involve some gearing shenanigans. I had similar problems with the tiny wheel, but the wheel was high enough such that I could route gears underneath it. Still, the agitator and the gear routing aren't the only sources of drivetrain complexity. The chain lift can only run in one direction, so I included an unreverser such that the motor can run in either direction. This is something I've wanted to try since the slide and spin. Sadly, the unreverser is not my design, but I found it very compact, easy to implement, and seemingly reliable enough. Subsequently, I've also implemented this module to work with the slide and spin. I probably would have made something similar back then had I managed to make my own unreverser work. The extensible chain lift has the same mounting points as the auto dozer's tower and an affordance to bypass the 1 to 5 gearing when connected to potentially either module. When standing alone, it currently runs off a 47154 9 volt motor. But here is the real trick to this lift and why I call it quote unquote extensible. Chains are naturally extensible, but a loop of chain does not expand in whole brick numbers. Different heights of this chain lift will have different amounts of slack and will require different amounts of tensioning. And balls will fall off the chain if it's too loose. Thus the question is, how do you build one tensioner that works for any given height of lift? The obvious answer might seem like a spring, but tensioning force proportional to compression is not really desirable in this application. The tensioning force should actually increase with the height of the lift, more force to support more chain. To achieve this, I've implemented a gravity tensioner which is, as far as I know, the first I've seen on any chain lift. It has a couple links of movement to accommodate varying amounts of slack, and you can easily add or remove weight to adjust the tension. How tall can you actually make it? I have no idea. Perhaps we'll find out in a future video. Finally, the pitch of the teeth on the chain is a somewhat arbitrary five links. Probably a little fast if each tooth held a ball, but the inconsistency of the agitator usually doesn't allow for that. Insufficient chain tension is probably the biggest reliability concern. 
like I said, balls will fall off regularly and the teeth can jam catastrophically if there isn't enough. I also don't know if any teeth will fall out of the chain after extended use as well. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.